I want to talk now, though, about the Indigenous voice to Parliament. This has been a big issue for a long while. You know that I've supported this publicly. I've actually been on a government advisory board to look at ways this could be legislated. But will this be an election issue? Will the parties commit to put this in a referendum to the Australian people? Will they commit to look at constitutional recognition of a voice rather than just legislating it, which is what the current government's policy is. I want to bring in now Dean Parkin, who's the director of the From the Heart movement to try and deliver this reform. Good to talk to you, Dean. Like me, you're in COVID isolation, I understand, uh, so we're talking to you via Zoom. We certainly are, Chris, uh, in solidarity with you and many other Australians, um, but uh, I guess it was my turn. Indeed, no worries. Now, tell us about this. Uh, what, what's your organisation looking to get out of the major parties in this election campaign? You're going to be running a campaign. What do you want from Anthony Albanese and from Scott Morrison? We want them to deliver upon their existing commitments, Chris. As you know, there's been long-running bipartisanship on this question of Indigenous constitutional recognition. This, this is not anything new. We're not putting anything new to both the Coalition and Labor here. It was John Howard back in 2007, in the lead up to the 2007 election, who said if re-elected then, he would hold a referendum on Indigenous constitutional recognition within 18 months. And we've had consistent bipartisanship across the aisle ever since. Both parties took uh, uh, Indigenous constitutional recognition and a referendum on that to the 2019 election as part of their policy positions. Obviously, we've all been affected by COVID. We can understand that that was not going to happen in this last term of parliament. But what we're saying is that next term, the next government, it's time to finally deliver upon commitments that have been made to Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people for the last 15 years. And what we're saying is, let's just put it to the people of Australia. Let's take this away from the politicians. Let's take this away from the talking heads and the commentators who say this or that about it. Let's just put it to the people because the Australian people are decent, they're up for this. And we think the next term of parliament is the time to hold a referendum on constitutional recognition. That has to happen um, by being a referendum on enshrining a voice to parliament. And, uh, and let the people have their say. It's, it's, it's time that we just put it to the people and let them have their say. I think there's no doubt that there's a widespread public support for Indigenous recognition in the Constitution, but the models proposed by John Howard and others have been pretty minimalist. But the model that's been put by an amazing consensus of Indigenous groups around the country is to enshrine a voice. I don't think the country's had a proper discussion about this yet because I think there's a lot of critics who try and mischaracterise the voice. I support it because apart from reconciliation and fairness, it will deliver practical outcomes. A voice, if it's done right, the way it's been designed, that is individual Indigenous communities on a regional level feeding up into a, a higher structure, the idea is it'll be grassroots decisions helping Indigenous communities reduce disadvantage and, and, get to, uh, and get better development for their people. So I, I don't think as a country we've actually had that debate yet, have we, about how a voice would actually work? We've been trying to have that debate, Chris. Um, we've been saying from the very beginning when Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples were asked this question about what form should constitutional recognition look like, we said we just can't do a symbolic statement of words put in the Constitution that ticks a feel-good box but doesn't actually change um, anything for the lives of people on the ground who really need some progress in things like health and education and housing and employment and all the other things that we see year after year after year in reports like Closing the Gap and not seeing any progress on that. So when we were asked, when we were finally asked what, what recognition should look like to us, we said, well, it's got to be practical um, and it's got to be through this voice. And the most important thing about this voice, if nothing else... It's got to make sure that it gives voice to those that have been previously unheard. As you say, it's the people in the communities. And again, this is no feel-good exercise because we know that those people in communities, they understand how they work. They understand how these issues impact their families, their children, their young people better than anybody else. And, and, the, and the problem that we've had for far too long is that those people have been absent from decision-making about their own community. So it's no wonder that we see year after year, strategy after strategy, program after program failing, 
because we're not actually listening to the people on the ground. We're not actually taking them seriously. And so this voice must be about bringing that experience, that expertise and that knowledge. And we've got to put them in front of the politicians. And we've got to put them in front of the bureaucrats outside the parliament as an advisory body that provides advice to the parliament and, and the government and hold, hold them to account and, and, and get them to explain you... um, why they're making decisions that, that aren't actually having an impact on the ground. Dean, very briefly, my understanding is that uh, Labor are promising that, that they are committing to a referendum that would be a referendum about a constitutionally recognised voice, but the Coalition say they won't. Uh, are you looking to change that during the campaign? Well, the Coalition haven't actually said that they won't do that. Uh, the options have been kept open over this last term of Parliament. Um, it has always been a sequenced idea to, to get the voice design work done, which, as you mentioned in your introduction, you were part of with the panel working with the likes of Marcia Langton and Tom Kelmer. So now we've got a bit of a shape. We've got a bit of an idea about what the voice could look like. Um, we also know that the government in this last budget for 2023 has committed, recommitted $160 million to make sure that the funds are there to hold a referendum. So I think that's a good sign of intent. Um, so we've got the design of a voice. We've got money to hold a referendum. There's no other option on the table and there's an existing commitment to Indigenous constitutional recognition. All roads lead to the same destination, okay. Chris, and that is, a, that is a referendum on a voice to Parliament in the next term, and we want that in 2023, first year of the first term of Parliament. Thanks for joining us, Dean. We'll keep on the case. Thanks a lot, Chris.